forgive me, I have trouble making a perfect recording, but um, I'm doing a hypothesis. It is Anwar Sadat's death anniversary, um, when he was assassinated October 6th. I think I'm a little bit tardy for that right now, but I just realized he had just had, had an anniversary. Um, he passed away. He was the uh, former president of Egypt. And although I admired his uh, charisma and his different way of doing things, um, I was also skeptical about why he did them. And I thought maybe uh, what he had done with the peace treaty um, with Israel might have been connected indirectly, if not directly, with the ongoing Palestinian stuff going on right now, years later. Um, I'm very disturbed about how the Israelis are treating the Palestinians. There's really nasty uh, violence going on. And, uh, you know, you can watch, you guys can watch it. But um, I, I, I like to have fun with uh, GPT. And I'm attempting right now to uh, do an audio on the conversation I had. Um, it, it'll start with uh, why I was on War Sadat killed. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can uh, select it. Let's see. Let's see if I can. All right, here we go. All right. Hit listen on this screenshot. Do a. Why was Anwar Sadat killed? I'm not sure if you're looking for specific details or a broader understanding of why Anwar Sadat was assassinated. Anwar Sadat, the former president of Egypt, was assassinated on October 6, 1981. His assassination was a result of complex political and ideological factors. It was carried out by Islamic extremists who opposed his policies, including the peace treaty he signed with Israel in 1979. This treaty angered some radical groups who saw it as a betrayal of the Palestinian cause. The exact reasons and motivations behind his assassination may vary depending on the perspective but it was a tragic event in Egypt's history. If you'd like more specific information or have additional questions, feel free to ask. Okay. I've heard of the PLO, but I still don't believe in extreme measures. It's understandable that you may have concerns about extreme measures. The Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, is a complex organization with a history of both political and militant actions. It's important to note that not all members or factions within the PLO have advocated for extreme measures. Okay, I'm going to go to the next picture. If I can find it. Okay, where is it? Okay, here we go. Uh, listen, please. The PLO was originally formed with the goal of achieving Palestinian self-determination and the establishment of a Palestinian state. Over time, it included various groups and individuals with differing ideologies and approaches to achieving these goals. While some factions have engaged in armed struggle in the past, others have pursued diplomatic and political efforts. It's essential to distinguish between the organization as a whole and the specific actions or strategies of particular factions within it. People often have different opinions on the PLO's history and methods, and it's a topic that has generated significant debate over the years. If you have any specific questions or would like more information about the PLO or related topics, please feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to provide a balanced and informative response. Do. It's interesting that around the anniversary of Anwar Sadat's death, Things seem to really be coming to a head in Palestine right now. That's me. Yes, 
It's quite coincidental and notable that you've mentioned the anniversary of Anwar Sadat's death in the context of current events in Palestine. The situation in the Middle East, particularly regarding the Israeli-Palestinian. Okay, next picture please. Listen please, Palestinian. Conflict has historically been a complex and sensitive issue. Yeah. The region has experienced periods of tension and conflict, often influenced by various political, social, and historical factors. Changes in leadership, policies, and external influences can all contribute to shifts in the dynamics of the conflict. If you're interested in understanding the current situation in more detail or if you have specific questions about recent events in Palestine or the broader Middle East, please feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to provide you with accurate and up-to-date information. Me. When I was a young girl I always admired Anwar Sadat's personality, but I don't necessarily support the ongoing attack on Palestinians currently. It's wonderful to hear that you admired Anwar Sadat's personality during your younger years. He was indeed a prominent figure in Egyptian and Middle Eastern history known for his charisma and leadership. No kidding. Your perspective on the ongoing situation in Palestine is important, and it's not uncommon for individuals to have complex feelings about. Complex feelings about... Political conflicts. Many people differentiate between their admiration for historical figures like Sadat and their views on current events and policies. Good. If you have any specific questions or if there's anything you'd like to discuss further regarding this topic or any other matter, please feel free to share, and I'm here to provide information and engage in a meaningful conversation. It's good to remember that the PLO as a whole was not necessarily violent. The people that killed Sadat were probably at the extreme end. I know. You're absolutely right. The PLO as a whole encompassed a range of individuals and factions with varying ideologies and approaches. While some factions within the PLO did engage in armed struggle at certain points in its history, Someone died. it's important to emphasize that not all members or factions were involved in violent activities. The individuals who assassinated Anwar Sadat in 1981 were indeed part of an extreme faction with radical views. Their actions were not representative of the entire PLO or its leadership. Thank God. This distinction is crucial when discussing complex organizations like the PLO, as it helps avoid generalizations and provides a more nuanced understanding of the group and its... Okay, next picture. Hold on, next picture. Okay, I'm having trouble getting the next picture. Hold on. Okay. All right, hold on a second. Okay, history. All right. I'm attempting to eliminate cancel culture in my life and doing my part to stop it in the world. Humans are complicated and so are groups of humans. Oh, yeah. Listen, please. For me, it also addresses the balance between admiring someone and knowing what's really important. I have a lot of respect for the Palestinians, too. That's a thoughtful perspective. It can indeed be challenging to balance admiration for individuals or historical figures with a broader understanding of complex issues and the importance of empathy for all parties involved. Respecting the aspirations and struggles of the Palestinian people is a significant aspect of understanding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's a conflict that has deeply affected both Israelis and Palestinians, and recognizing the humanity and rights of all individuals involved is crucial for fostering peace and reconciliation. If you ever want to delve deeper into this topic or if you have any more questions or thoughts to share, feel free to continue the conversation.
I'm here to provide information and engage in meaningful discussions. Just for the fun of it, this is just a hypothetical situation. That's me talking. I wonder what a Palestinian supporter would say to a person like Anwar Sadat in a nonviolent diplomatic way. I'm trying to imagine what it might have been like if he hadn't been uh, assassinated, if if someone had diplomatically approached him and said, I don't agree with what you're, you know, I don't agree with what you're doing. So here's GPT telling me what that might have been like. Listen, please. Listen, please. In a hypothetical nonviolent diplomatic conversation between a Palestinian supporter and a figure like Anwar Sadat, it might go something like this. Palestinian supporter, Mr. Sadat, I want to acknowledge your role in the Camp David Accords and the peace treaty with Israel. While we understand your intentions for peace and stability in the region, it's important to recognize the Palestinian perspective. Our people have also suffered for decades, and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is deeply rooted in historical grievances. We believe in a just and lasting solution that respects the rights and aspirations of both Israelis and Palestinians. It's our hope that, through diplomatic channels, we can work together to find a fair and equitable resolution that ensures the self-determination and security of the Palestinian people. We appreciate any efforts towards peace but also hope for your understanding of the Palestinian struggle and a commitment to addressing our concerns at the negotiation table. Such a conversation would emphasize the importance of dialogue, empathy, and a commitment to addressing the concerns of both parties in a peaceful and diplomatic manner. We have lost a lot of empathy in this world. And I believe we can get it back if we learn how to manage it properly. The key is not to lose empathy, it's to manage it. Listen, please. Do. If someone were able to deal with him that way, he might have still been alive. That's me saying that. It's an interesting thought, GPT. and diplomacy and dialogue have indeed played crucial roles in resolving conflicts throughout history. Anwar Sadat's assassination was a tragic event, and there were certainly complex political and ideological factors at play. In an alternate scenario where dialogue and diplomacy were successful in addressing the concerns and grievances of all parties involved, it's possible that the outcome could have been different. Peaceful resolution is often the preferred path to ending conflicts and preventing such tragic events. However, it's essential to recognize that historical events are influenced by a multitude of factors and outcomes can be difficult to predict. Nevertheless, no promoting diplomacy, understanding, and empathy in international relations is a worthy goal to strive for to prevent conflicts and promote peace. I wonder how Anwar Sadat would have handled that Palestinian diplomat. Me. Do. GPT. Okay, GPT is going to come up with the answer. Okay, next next card. Okay, this is what Amor Sadat might say, according to GPT. Listen, please. Anwar Sadat, I appreciate your perspective and your commitment to the Palestinian cause. It's crucial for us to acknowledge the suffering and aspirations of all people in the region. My own journey in pursuing peace with Israel was driven by a desire for stability and the belief that diplomacy could bring about a better future. I recognize that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is complex, with deeply rooted historical grievances on both sides. In our pursuit of peace with Israel, we face challenges and criticisms as well. However, I firmly believe that dialogue, Negotiation and diplomacy are the paths to lasting solutions. While my approach focused on Egypt's interests, I also believe that regional stability and justice were interconnected. 
In this hypothetical scenario, I would encourage you to engage in peaceful dialogue and negotiations with the relevant parties. The path to peace is often challenging, but it's one worth pursuing for the well-being of all involved. Such a response would likely reflect Anwar Sadat's pragmatic and diplomatic approach to conflict resolution, emphasizing the importance of dialogue and negotiation as essential tools for achieving peace in the Middle East. Next card. Listen, please. DC. Things would have been very different possibly. I suppose tragedy does hit me on both sides of the conflict. Me talking. Back then when he was assassinated and right now while I'm struggling feeling the pain of the Palestinians. I like to think of alternative scenarios. Maybe I'm just trying to comfort myself. I hope I'm also trying to think of ways to deal with the world. I abhor violence so much and yet I have a staunch belief in self-defense too. It's completely understandable to reflect on alternative scenarios and explore different perspectives, especially when dealing with complex and sensitive issues like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Your empathy for both sides of the conflict and your commitment to non-violence while also recognizing the need for self-defense are valid and thoughtful positions. Finding ways to deal with the complexities of the world, especially in situations where tragedy and conflict persist, is a challenging endeavor. It's important to continue seeking peaceful solutions, advocating for justice, and supporting initiatives that promote dialogue and understanding. Balancing nonviolence with the need for self-defense is a complex moral and ethical consideration. Mm -hmm. Many individuals and communities face similar dilemmas, and the approach often varies based on personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. All is not fair in love and war. All is not fair in love and war, my misquote. Your variation of the famous quote, all is fair in love and war, adds a unique twist to the saying. While the original quote suggests that in matters of love and war, almost any action or strategy can be justified, your misquote implies that there are limits or unfair aspects even in these intense situations. It's a thought-provoking perspective that highlights the complexity of these two areas of human experience. Do. Okay, that was just the format. Okay, is that it? Okay, that's it, you guys. Thank you for listening. Peace. Rest in peace, Anwar Sadat. Rest in peace, those in Palestine that died. Let's keep fighting for justice. Palestine, may you form your sovereignty. Eventually, may you find peace. God bless you all.